I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RTRV channel. We're live tonight and we're answering your questions. So just pop a question down in the chat and we'll be happy to answer it. That's right, Barb. So we had a great week. Uh, we're back home in South Carolina. Looking forward to seeing all of our tubies tonight. We're looking forward to it. Hope everybody had a great week. Yep. Um, yeah, we hope you had a great week. Thanks for sending in the items for the viewer showcase. We'll be doing a viewer showcase uh, later on in the live stream. And to, this week we have a new video coming out, Ed. We do, Barb. And, you know, uh, I'll be the first one to attest. Barb's been working really hard on this video. But I want you all to know that it's going to help you <laughs> within your in your endeavors of opening and working within your stained glass business so so the new uh video is a, the complete guide to pricing your stained glass work and we're going to give you 10 things that you'll need to keep in mind when you're pricing your work and when we finish with those things you'll be able to price your work either by the square foot by the piece or by the project right and that's going to help Every one of you, no matter how you price your work, it's going to help you along with this project that Barbara's been working on for the, the 10 best ways to price your work, your projects, is you're getting a worksheet. You'll get a worksheet with it. And what the best thing we recommend to do is take this video, take that worksheet and fill that worksheet out on each individual job for a few jobs, just so that you can kind of get the feeling of how you really need to be pricing your work because your time is worth money. Your materials are worth making a profit on. And when you're done making that window for that customer, you should be making a profit as well. And we hope that this formula will help you out. Yeah. So we're going to uh, have fun with that. And uh, it seems complicated, but it's not. It's really not. It's pretty simple. You build a stained glass window and you make a profit, right? No, it's not that simple. Doesn't always but happen we'll that way. Simple. But hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight. I see a lot of you just popped in and it's awesome. We're great. It's great to have you all here. We want to, you know, last Monday night, Barb, we were sitting in our hotel room. Yeah. And right. we did a live stream from our hotel in Alexandria. Vir I know. I don't even know how it worked. But hey. We were in Alexandria, Virginia last Monday night, and what a beautiful city that is. And I just want to take a minute, and I want to give a big shout out to our good friend Henry down at Il Porto Restaurant. And if you guys are in Alexandria and want some Italian food, Il Porto is the place to be for Italian food in Alexandria, Virginia. Okay, so I want to give a shout out. We've got some, all of our people are here tonight. CM is here. Mimi is here. Karen is here. Julie is here. Uh, B. B. S. I like your name, B. S. <laughs> My initials are B. S. Yeah, this is B Street. That's right. B Street. Uh, Flower and Glasses here. Uh, Thomas Sharp. Um, hey, Thomas. It's good to see you, buddy. Cat St. Jane is here. Patty Hike is here. C. Sim 115 is here. Mushy is here. Uh -oh. Julia Graves is here. Mushy. Okay, All Mushy. right, Mushy. <laughs> I hope Mushy and the gang are feeling better. Lawrence is here and Martha Crowder is here. Um, well, Barb, I tell you, we've got a lot of people tuned in tonight. And, you know, we had some questions come in last week and we were able to get them printed out and, and get them tagged on. And, you know, the, one of the questions we had last week was, could you do a video on selling and pricing your work? Yes. Yes, we can. So, and it's coming out this week. So get ready. Okay. So we're doing a video on pricing your work and uh, then we'll, we'll start on the video about selling your work. Yeah. Cause, cause it's a two part. Yeah. You can't do both. I mean, pricing is pretty, you know, it's, it gets a little bit uh, complicated. I don't want to say complicated because it's just 10 simple steps. If you know those 10 items, if you know the answer to 10 questions, you're going to be able to If you know work. the numbers to the that answers to the question yes. that you can plug in. It's very, it's very simple. A lot of you are already doing it, but you don't know, you don't know where to plug it in at and how to plug it in and how to make the math work so that you can make a profit. 
So. Now, I'm not going to be giving you a spreadsheet that's going to automatically calculate everything for you. I'm just going to give you a form that you can plug in the numbers and figure it out yourself. Right. So we'll be anyway. we'll be putting this out for everybody. And then eventually it's going on to our website. And this particular video, uh, we'll, you'll be able to download it and everything, but it'll be $4.99. Because yeah, it's but, a lot of work that Barbara did for this. And it's really, I, I'm I'm not impressed because I know how good at what she what she does is. And I just want to thank her for doing that for you guys. And, you know, it's really, it's incredible just the amount of work that she put into this over the past several days to for you guys. Okay, I'm going to go out on the limb. I'm going to say, okay, this is what I'm saying. Oh, she's saying. I'm, I'm going out on limb. I'm going to, we're going to release that video. Okay. It's going to come out for members. It's going to come out Thursday. You guys get to see it first. Then the video will go out public on Friday, but I'm going to put the spreadsheet and the information on our website for free for two weeks. Okay. That'll give you guys a chance to go there, download it, keep it for yourself for two weeks. Anyone that comes on after that, video is released after that two weeks it'll be 4.99 it'll be 4.99 for the worksheets and it'll be good so so that's for you guys so that's part a that's part a. that's part a we have a part b barb has a part b coming out and that is how to sell your work now when you're selling your work guys you know you're talking to your customers you're not just selling your work keep this in mind you're selling yourself if you can't sell yourself, your work's going to sit on the shelf. I promise you. Yeah, because you have value as an artist. As an artist, you are worth every dime that you make. Brenda is here from Wichita. Hey, Brenda. Um, it's hot in Wichita. Yeah, so that'll be fun, guys. So we can talk more about it when you watch it. And then during the uh, chat the next week, you can ask yeah, questions. Yeah, we can get some questions going and, you know, start a whole chat about this new video that Barbara's got coming out. I'm excited about it. Yeah, because people have been asking and asking. And uh, finally, I got my act together and did it. Okay. What, well, what we needed was nine days off on a vacation. <laughs> I had to get some inspiration. <laughs> I had to have time to write is what it had to be. Yeah, and Barbara okay. has to be motivated, not motivated, but just in that groove for writing. So. Okay, we had another question come in. Okay, Barbara. what type of circle cutter do you recommend? Well, I tell you, I I, I used to recommend the Glass Star, and of course, Glass Star is is no longer in production right now. It's still available out there at some of your suppliers, but we do have a glass cutter on our website at conwayglass.com forward slash rdrv, and you'll see it right there in the tools. It's about twenty three dollars. It's also a strip cutter as well. So it gives you a combination, about $23. It's a good price for a good tool that'll last you as long as you'll take care of it. So just want to let everybody know that it is available on our website and just wanted to tell you about that. Uh, Karen, yes, I got your order. Your um, envelope arrived in the mailbox on Saturday. I was quite shocked when I saw it from the sheriff's department. <laughs> I thought maybe you know I us. We don't ticket. do anything wrong. <laughs> I thought maybe I had a ticket I didn't know about. But anyway, thanks for making my day. Yes, we'll get that out in the mail to you tomorrow. And thank you so much. Um, C. Sim wants to know if anyone else besides her is having a hard time with the feed. Uh, I don't know. See? I don't know. Um, I, everything on this end, as I'm looking at it, looks okay. Yeah, and it look everything. We don't have any lag because I'm moving my hands and watching the screen at the same time. Uh, Ray is uh, Ray is in Gettysburg tonight, so uh, if it's he may be joining he may us. be joining us and he may not, but that's okay. So okay. You, don't forget tonight, y'all. We have viewer showcase, yes, and have we, we got some uh, viewer showcase for you tonight? That's right. Okay, another question. Yeah, let's do another question, Barb. This question. Is uh, is actually uh, let's say question number three coming down the road. Where are we at, Barb? <laughs> I'm gonna take. Let's see. Uh, pick one. Pick a uh, question. Pick a, any pick question. Pick a question. Okay. So, uh, is copper foil as strong as a leaded window? Um, this question was uh, J S wanted to know. She likes copper foil for ease of construction but she has never heard about the differences in strength. 
Well, you, you know, um, copper foil windows and leaded windows are, are you know, are leaded together the old English way. Um, that both of them are actually quite strong. It's it's how you fabricate them that allows them to be rigid and put in the openings where they'll stay. Keep in mind, you know, Tiffany built a lot of his biggest windows out of copper foil, but he also reinforced them and constructed them with such a way that structurally they were sound. So you can make structurally sound windows with copper foil. You can make structurally sound windows with lead. I prefer if the wind is large enough with more intricate pieces in it. I like to mix the two mediums together. And this gives you a way to express your, you know, the talent that, that you create of this window. And also it'll allow you to, to get a little bit different depth within the window. But keep in mind, your windows should always be reinforced if they're with of any size at all. They should be reinforced because gravity, though it keeps our feet on the ground, it pulls everything else down there with it. And if you're building with copper foil and it is a large window, you will have to add uh, reinforcing. Uh, by, by way of copper restrip and or both reinforcing bars. Okay. So, you may, you know, it may be just you just hold the window up every 12 inches from from the bottom to the top on a horizontal. But it may be that your restrip is inside some of those pieces of glass that are curved and wavy and and making it that much more rigid. I don't I don't think any window can stand up to, a, you know, a hurricane force winds. I'm pretty sure that and some of them probably already have. But, you know, once they're done with that eight or 10 hours, I think it's time we got to rebuild those bad boys. OK, um, we have a couple more people have come on. Uh, John Golden is here. Sally from California Tool Studios is here and Flowering Glass is here. Flowering Glass has a question. Any recommendations for working with Van Gogh glass when it chips off the back? You know which one the Van Gogh? Well, yeah, you know, the Van Gogh glass is just a really pretty pattern with, uh, and it's silvered on the back. Uh, what you're going to find is that um, the Van Gogh glass is almost kind of like a glue chip underneath of it, and then it's silvered. Kind of like how you handle mirror. Yeah, kind of like you, you handle mirror. The Van Gogh glass should be, should be sanded on the backside. It should be sealed if you're going to use it for anything at all. And uh, as far as taking the, the flakes out of it, you just need to be a little more uh, forgiving with your cutting and not, you know, treat it quite so rough. Um, even, I mean, it's glass. Mirror chips as well. But if it's chipping really bad, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can tell you to stop that. Um, but I, I'm not sure without uh, playing around I, with it a little bit. Right. I would be as precise as you can be on your cutting and stay away from the grinder if you can. And the grousing pliers are going to hurt you really bad if you don't cut it correctly and you try to just chip it off. A if bit. you need to sand the edges, maybe use sandpaper, but be very delicate because it will chip off. If you're using lead, it's probably not going to show. But if you're using copper foil, it's going to present a real problem. So yeah, you're going to have to treat it very carefully. And some of the chipping could be that maybe your grinder head is too coarse. If you have a speed bit on your grinder head, it's going to rip everything apart, not just the Van Gogh glass. But it's going to make a mess of everything because it it's like running down a bumpy road of diamonds. I, I don't even know if I'd put it on the grinder. If you can't, if you yeah, if you, you like Barbara said, I think get your cutting down to where you don't have to, uh, you know, grind it or chip it or anything like that. The Van Gogh glass is beautiful, but please don't forget to seal those edges after you sand them because that silver will come right off and it'll start turning black With right clear away. Clear nail polish. Clear if finger it nail is polish. silvered on the back. Um, yeah, the I'm Van Gogh sure. glass. All of it silvered. Some of it might just be painted black. I, I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but I remember it. What you're saying, yeah, it's really chippy. Yeah, because well, we well, yeah, because we saw about thirty sheets of it while we were up country. Okay, Jennifer's here. Hey, Jennifer. 
And um, she has a question tonight. Is there a trick or a pointer you can share for cutting glass that is multiple colors and blended together? My curves are always choppy on the edges on that glass, but don't have the problem on regular glass. Well, we're going back to your glass and, and the multiple colors are stacked differently. We do have a video out there. Listen to your glass cutter. So what you want to do, and that, that video is about cutting textured glasses. It's also will teach you to cut um, glasses that have multiple colors stacked up in them. Because it sounds to me uh, what, you're, what you're running into. Now, if you're just trying to take out a curve like that with a little bit of glass around the edge and you're just taking that off, you're going to have to chip away at it anyway to, to get it to come off. The other thing is, though, is listen to your glass cutter. Don't change the pressure on your glass cutter just because you can't hear it, okay? So remember, cutting textured glasses and glasses that are stacked up. You know, pinks and whites are really hard. Blues are soft. Greens with white in it and amber are really hard glasses. The, the green is soft, the amber is okay, but the white is really stiff. And those are glasses that you're not, you're going to hear your cutter, not hear your cutter, hear your cutter, not hear your cutter. But please don't change the pressure just because you can't hear it. And you'll find that I believe that that will help you because if you can't hear it, I'd almost bet you're letting up rather than pushing down. Okay, and Ed does say listen to your glass cutter, but what he is saying is, okay, you're going to listen to your glass cutter, but you know that that glass is stacked, so you're not going to hear uh, that score line as completely solid score line. But you're going to keep the but pressure. Keep that pressure even. Keep yeah. that pressure even. Keep the same pressure on your glass cutter, start to finish, whether you're cutting patterns or straight lines. And that try that, Jennifer. Just try, Jennifer, please. And it, and if it doesn't work, then we'll we'll back up and we'll go to a different route. Okay, Raymond, ready? Did I say hello? I think I did. Hi, Raymond. Hey, Raymond. Um, okay, so uh, Cat Saint Jane said that a gel bit works with Van Gogh glass and fingernail polish to fix the chips. So that's her tip. Okay, way to go. Thanks for the tip. Huh? Thanks. Appreciate it. We appreciate that. Um, and Jennifer said she thinks that's what she's doing wrong. It's hitting the other colors and messing her up. I think it's, it's, it's consistent. You know what? It's, I hate to say this. It's all in your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, just it's same just same pressure, same pressure. Keep that same pressure and actually, and keep that same pressure on glasses that are stacked, pulling straight lines, just pull some straight lines on some scrap stacked glass and listen to it and but just as you're cutting curves inside and out just don't change the pressure it's, it's very difficult but eventually you 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 get it and it's always the same pressure no matter what you're cutting john golden says hi i don't know if i said hello john but i just want to make sure i got everyone um and welcome everyone we're glad to have you here because uh, it makes it so much better when we can share information with each other and oh, it does inspire our, each other to be right. better glass. Makers. Our community is just really a, a group of just really, really wonderful people, Barbara. I know, I know, and they're so helpful to each other, and that's what makes it great. I have another question. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'll take it. You'll take it. Um, okay, this is from Julie. Julie said she's taken a lead cane class, and the panel she's working on is now framed in zinc. Um, and this is what her teacher is teaching. And this is how she's teaching. That's cool. No, we're good. Can you tell me why you are using lead for your frame? Is it because it is being placed in a wood frame? By the way, uh, her soldering needs a lot of work. Uh, she used to do copper foil and she's getting back to working with glass. And also, do we frame panels in zinc? Well, hey, Julie. And she appreciates you. Oh, thank you, Julie. That's that's you're very kind. You're very kind. So, um, yeah, the um, Barb and I, 
we use lead around the outside of our windows basically because we are constantly installing windows that we have repaired or restored and or both into wooden sashes. Those wooden sashes are never square at all. So the lead allows us, it gives us a little bit of lead way, like almost a half an inch if we need it to, because the windows may be out of square this way, out of square this way. They could be out of square this way and this way. But the reason we don't use zinc around our windows is because if we're not installing them into a wooden sash, we're installing them into a wooden frame to hang them. I just, I, I repair so many, well, so many larger windows that are put in zinc frames and eventually the hangers just pull away from it or the zinc tears. Keep in mind, the zinc is just a very, like a piece of half inch wide zinc only has an eighth inch, you know, lip on it to bite the glass, but it will, it also uh, is just a piece of metal that's, I don't even know. It's probably a couple hundred thousandths of an inch thick. It's not very thick at all. And then it's folded to make what it's supposed to through an extrusion process. So using zinc, I'm not saying don't use zinc on the outside of your windows. I, I would never tell you not to do something like that. But the reason I don't do it is because of the amount of work that I do and where I do it at. And I don't let anything go out the front door uh, unless it's in a wooden frame, if it's not being installed in an opening in someone's house. And that's just from experience of repairing other windows that have fallen to the ground. Uh, Thomas Sharp wants to know, do we use H came or U came for that? We use a flat H for that. Uh, we use a flat H and that, that gives us a bite on the, on the glass. And it also gives us a bite out here that we can take my microplane if we need to and just shave it just a little bit to make sure that it goes into that sash that may be a hundred years old. And of so. course you have to uh, add for that when you're doing your pattern, you have to add for that H came on the outside. Yeah. It's yeah. not the same width as you. So what Ed does, what Ed does with this pattern, I'm using flat H lead around the outside. I draw my block, which is 24 by 36, basically. Then I come in from that outside line three sixteenths of an inch y'all that's my cut line for my glass inside the window my finish line is the outside line and that'll be the outside of the h okay so um you're welcome julie <laughs> that was a really I hope good it question helps, huh? that's a really good question and um i think ed explained it very well i hope so i hope you yeah. uh karen wants to know the hardest glass you have ever had to score she says that she just uh, got some clear glass with bubbles, the seeded glass, and that stuff cuts her up. <laughs> so uh, okay, so the seedy glass can get some only band -Aids, she said. get some band aids, but the seedy glass can only be cut from one side of the of the glass, and that side is still going to have uh, what I call potholes and pucker marks. The smooth side. The smooth side is going to have potholes and pucker marks. If you cut it on the rough side, it's going to have divots and bombshells in it. So, but anyway, the clear CD glass is, uh, well, I, you know what? Here's the thing. You may be using what they call uh, the fog. I can't think of the name. The dew drop. If you're using the dew drop glass, Karen, yeah, man, that thing, that it will cut you, but never never ever give up just get get used to it cutting some straight lines and then start your patterns over but if you're cutting dew drop it's a little difficult than the than the clear cd glass karen so you might want to use it just in the borders <laughs> okay Let's yeah the dew drop's crazy because your cutter wants to roll over those bubbles and it wants to go sideways and it wants to do what it wants to do rather than what you want it to so Okay. Um, she also wanted to know the hardest glass that you have ever cut. The hardest glass that I have ever cut. Uh, you know, I've had some troubles with glasses before because they weren't, you know, annealed correctly or something. Um, 
but what I've always found is that if I take a piece of that, that I'm having trouble with and score it a couple of times and just see exactly where its head is, uh, I can usually work my way through it. The glass where its head is, you know, it, it, it has, was a, it has feelings. The, well, the glass has a memory is how it, how it was made, but I can't do anything about that when I'm cutting it. But the, the, the real reason you have trouble cutting any glass is because they have advanced the annealing temperature and time, which means they're not giving it as long as it really does need to anneal. Um, you can't over anneal glass. All you can do is anneal it correctly. So I would say probably the hardest piece of glass I've ever had to cut was probably a maybe a Euroboros or a Yakigani. Um, again, those glasses are textured, and this was when Ed was probably very young. I don't have a whole lot of trouble cutting anything now. And that's, I think it's due to uh, paying attention over the last 43 years. You know what, Ed? What? We almost have 6,000 subscribers. What? Come on, everybody. You see the subscribe thing there? Barbara says we are 12, 12, 12 people away. We're 12 6, viewers. Those of you that are sitting back in the wings right now, I know there's at least 12 of you that haven't subscribed to the channel. Please go ahead before we shut down tonight. Let's go ahead and subscribe to the RDRV channel. Get us 12 more subscribers, y'all. Tell your friends. Get us 6,000 and we're going to we're going to ring that bell. Don't forget the notification bell because it's right there. All you have to do is click on that, and that notification bell will tell you when Barb and I are coming at you live. Y'all, we need 12 more subscribers to hit 6,000 tonight, and that means we're on our way to 10,000. That's our goal. Our goal, 10,000, y'all. It's so great. Well, our goal was 6,000. We moved it up to 10. Well, we had, so you we know, you can't, up. you have to keep setting goals. You can't just, you know, be happy with what's going on. So thank you guys, all you subscribers out there. We love you. We appreciate it very much. So, and if any of this oh. that we're talking about tonight helps you out, don't forget, you can give us a, a one of those uh, sticker, a super sticker. And uh, we got super chats available. Everything that y'all subscribe back to us goes into the kitty to help us bring you better programming. Me, my P is here. Uh-oh, I feel that urge, Barb. Um, Jennifer, ooh, I'm sorry. Jennifer said she got her arty workshop, um, apron today and she loves the material and the design with pockets. It's exactly what she's been looking for. Oh, well, thank good, you, Jennifer. I'm glad you got it. Wow, that was time. quick too. That was pretty quick. Well, it wasn't really quick because she ordered we it right vacation. before we went on vacation. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We were, we were on vacation. But yeah. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm glad you like it. I wear mine every day. I love it because I can put my phone in there, my tools in there, everything. And it washes up real nice. And it nice. washes up. It'll soften up too. Rochelle's here. Hey, Rochelle. And um, Jennifer said she'd subscribe twice if she could. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Now, I had something else that came up here. What did I see? I saw another question. Let's see. Okay, guys. Have I missed any questions? Let's see. I think. Oh, what? yes. John. John, John, John. Okay. Oh. He has some old glass panels in zinc. Um, he has a lot of clear bevels uh, that he's going to use. The old frame was put together like a puzzle, not soldered. Not soldered. Not sure what that is, John. Um, hmm. Is it zinc? brass? Is it brass? If it's brass, it may. Oh, well, they still it would still have to be soldered. To I'm not together. sure. I'd have to see a picture. Yeah, you'll have to send us a picture, John. Because that is uh, that's quite unusual. And, you know, you can use zinc. I just don't recommend using zinc in the. Uh, indoors because it's too rigid it's too stiff and the solder joints break like crazy i got a question bar what's that this one is coming from denise and it says 
What is your opinion on gel flux or paste flux? Well, Denise, I don't have an opinion on either one of those because I use Ruby flux. We use Ruby flux, which is a liquid base flux that cleans up really nice. It's on our website at theconwayglass.com forward slash RDRV. And you can scroll down and you'll see the Ruby flux there. It comes in two uh, one quart bottles. And uh, it'll last you quite a while. So you and I've if you're using paste or uh, you know gel flux, when you start using the ruby flux, you're going to thank yourself because it's really a nice way to uh, you know. Uh oh. Uh oh, Thomas. Thank you so oh, much. Thomas, I really appreciate you. it. Good man. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for the super sticker. We appreciate it very much. We appreciate you, Thomas. Um, okay. Someone said they um, clicked on subscribe 15 times. I wish that worked, but I don't think it's going yeah, to work. Thank it, you for it, the thoughts. It, it doesn't work, that. but we appreciate the thought. That's right. And you know what? It's the thought that counts. It really it is. It really is. We know you guys enjoy our channel. We enjoy being here. We, we do this for y'all. It's not for us. We okay. Do this for Karen you. wanted to know if we make our own wooden frames. Uh, we have in the past, but I've, I've found that it's cheaper. Well, it's not cheaper. It's more cost effective to just order the six foot lengths already made. The wood is finished. And all you got to do is put it together. To me, I've got other things to do besides woodwork. So it's better for me to order the frames and then all I have to do is miter the corners and glue it and screw it and I'm done. So the, I would prefer to... The wood comes from Franklin. Correct? Yeah, I order the wood from Franklin Art Glass and it comes with the groove already in it and it's got two grooves. You can order the groove for copper foil or you can order the groove for lead. And um, then remember to... Uh, we have a video on how to frame it. It's Look, called frame it. It's called frame it. Look it up. And when you put the screws in, you put the screws in from the side so that it because hangs. it hangs from the top. Right. So you don't put the screws in from the top and then hang it from the top because put the screws in from the side. And yeah, then and then hang, hang it from, from the, the top. top. But but watch the video. It's it's really a good video. It's simple and it shows you an easy piece of equipment that you can purchase to make your job a lot better when you're mitering, um, putting mitered corners together. So. Um. Patty, you should be able to, uh, Patty wanted to know if, if there is a way to check to see if she subscribed to the channel. Pat, Patty, you can go to, you, you have a channel since you're here, you have a channel. Um, and uh, go to your channel and you should be able to look and see who you're subscribed to. I can look, I can't look right now, but I can look later and let you know if you, yeah, if you so can't find it, it let me know and I'll look for it and see if you're subscribed. But if you get a notice, if you get a notice about our channel channels and you have set that up so that you get those notices, then you'll get our notice. If you say, if you tell YouTube, you don't want to have any notices, then you won't get any. Right. Notices. So, but so you can go to the to you. YouTube channel to the RDRV. It'll, it'll come up for you. And right over there to the right side, if the subscribe is still in red, you haven't subscribed yet. If you have subscribed, it will be not italicized, but in gray. Um, Cause I well, checked out to make sure I was subscribed. Yeah. He does, <laughs> he's, he's subscribed now. Um, and we were talking about gel flux and paste flux. A lot of people say that gel and paste flux uh, smokes. So um, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if that's true. And it'd give you a funny taste on the tip of your tongue. If that's the case, you need to stop using it. You, you need better ventilation. If you if you taste that flux in your mouth while you're soldering, then your ventilation is not good. So that's just a tip. That's a great way to tell if you need better ventilation in your studio if while you're soldering especially those of you that do copper foil because you're on it all the time and you're above it. Mm -hmm. If you taste that solder and it's only on the tip of your tongue, it's nowhere else. Or if your nose starts running, you need better ventilation. But if you'll try the Ruby flux and use the ventilation, all that'll stop. I promise you. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Am I missing something? I see y'all are talking amongst yourselves. And I just want to make sure I have everyone taken care of here. 
Have you used something called tallow as flux? No. No. No, we uh-huh. haven't, Julie. Uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, if you have and it works well, maybe you could share it with us at the next live stream. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll keep my eye out for it. Uh, John says we look younger every time he tunes in. Well, thank you, John. You are way too kind, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, Ed and I, since we started this YouTube channel in 2020, October of 2020, I've lost 40 pounds and Ed's lost 60 pounds. So you can go back and look at those old videos and see what. Maybe that's why we look younger because we And it's lost about time for both pounds. of us to get a haircut. So. <laughs> we both need a haircut. I was going to get my haircut before we went on vacation, but my hairdresser called and said her son and her father had COVID. So she wasn't cutting hair until that she right. was checked out. And, you know, the great thing about um, us going on vacation and going to the uh, American Glass Conference was that to get in the conference, even though you paid your money, if you didn't have your... Uh, your shot records with you, you weren't coming in. And that made Barbara and I feel very safe because there were several hundred people there. And um, hey, we're home. Everything's good. We did exactly what we were supposed to do while we were on vacation. You know? Susan B said, tell people about trimming the flux brush. She's found that to be one of the most useful things that we say. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate uh, that. Brushes are de- designed to hold a lot of liquid which is counterproductive with flux. Very true. Yes, thank you. So I'm, I'm glad that that works out for you. We have a lot of little tricks like that in our videos online. You know, right now, I was just looking it up. We have a, over 153 videos here on the RDRV channel, y'all. And that is that is just, it's all due to this one right here. Let me tell you, the director. So Susan was talking about her flux brush. And if you haven't seen uh, Ed, do this little trick. I don't know if we have a flux brush Let me see if I have here. one. But what you want to do is just trim that flux brush. Just take a pair of scissors and just trim it off. And just leave, what a do you say? A quarter of an inch. quarter of an That's inch it. on it. That's all you need. And use it. Just it's- leave a quarter of an inch on your brush because all that hair on that brush that you get, that little silver brush that you get, all that hair. All it does is waste your flux, waste your time, and waste your solder. Uh, It's a waste of everything. (laughs) John Golden wants to know if anybody, anyone can go to the conference. Uh, Yes, you, uh, well, you have to be a member of the American Glass Guild. So. um, And that's like $48 a year, y'all. No, it's more than that. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I can get that. You can go to the uh, AmericanGlassGuild.org. and check out. Uh, the reason ours was cheaper is because we joined mid-year. So it renews at the first of the year. And I, I can't remember what, maybe it's $125 a year, but a wealth of information. Oh, and the, the y'all, the people, the people that we met uh, just welcomed us into their organization like it was, like we had been there forever. So uh, we met a lot of really interesting people. We made a lot of good friends. And some of y'all may be in the wings watching the show tonight that we met up in Corning at the AGG show. And we um, we just wanted to let you know that we really had a great time in Corning and we look forward to coming to Richmond next year. So um, John wants to know, is link, is link, is lead or zinc better to put around bevels? I would use, um, lead just because uh, bevels on the edges are real thin and you can chip bevels by p- just pulling them into the zinc and, and putting a border together or scratch or them. scratching them. So I, I would use Don't lead. And if you're worried about the edges on the, on the bevels, just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand the edges. If you'll get rid of that sharp, the chances of them chipping are a lot less. So. Okay. So, um, Let's see here. New comments. Boop. Just check in the comments if it'll let me do that. Okay. Okay. Magali. Yes. Send us pictures. Magali's here. Hi, Magali. Hey, Magali. Send us pictures of Yakagani. Please do. I guess you're back <laughs> home now. So glad you had. No, safe. she's not. Oh, she's, she's headed home next week. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Send us pics. <laughs> 
Yeah. Send we're, us we're, we're anxiously awaiting all your beautiful glass. Um, okay. Julie says that's some kind of animal fat, that tallow. I uh, don't know that that would work, but uh, if you've got to use some, well, that's, that's not, no. No. No, that won't work. Your flux cleans Your flux the is glass. an acid. Your tallow will dirty the glass. Yeah. So the flux is an acid. Um, you know, I had a, I had a, several friends that are plumbers and they could really explain it to you. But what it does is it cleans the copper. It cleans it. And, you know, when you put it on there, that's it. It's clean. You, you don't keep piling it on there to keep cleaning it. If your copper foil is your, if your copper foil panel is oxidized, the best thing to do is to steel wool the copper foil before you start to. Rochelle used the uh, tallow on lead. So maybe she knows something we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but not on foil. So I'm not sure. <laughs> now that that proves proves me wrong once again. Yeah, I just don't. I just you know I don't know. I I it took me a long time to find ruby flux, and I found <laughs> it, and that's it. I'm I'm done looking. So, but so, you guys have different ideas about stuff and uh, use different products. Use different products, and that's what we're here for, because there's several hundred of you, almost six thousand of you that subscribe to our channel. That's 6,000 different ways of doing stained glass, y'all. And it's, you know what? It's all right here and we're sharing it with each other. And that is just really how it, how it's supposed to work. Anyway. Okay. I had this, this come in this week from Juan. 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 Sean. Juan. Juan Carlos. Carlos. Yes. Have you guys been hippies all the way through since the 60s? I watched you with the glass cutter cutting the straight lines. How did you cut around your pear pattern? Was that a secret of the trade? Ah, Juan, you watched the lamp repair where yes, we where we cut a pear. The lamp repair, A-I-R to P-E-A-R. And we got a pear going on. So, no, that's not a, it's not a, a glass secret because you know what? <clears throat> Juan, there are no secrets, my friend. Not in the glass industry. We all share them together. We don't have any secrets. We don't we have share any secrets. our secrets. I mean, people have secrets because yeah, they, so, they want to. So Juan, I hope you're I hope secrets. you're tuned in tonight because Barbara's gonna blast us over to the middle camera. And I've already drawn a pair on a piece of glass. And oh, I'm gonna funny. show you how to take it out, Juan. I'm gonna I show you right watching. now. Take it out. I hope I hope you're watching, Juan. Juan, I hope you're watching, buddy. Here now what, where are we going? Where We're are we going, going? Camera number two, Bar, please. And you're going to do a you're going to do a glass demo. I'm just going to do a demo. I drew a pair here for Juan. We're going to cut a pair out. Okay. All right. Not a pair of pairs, but All we're right. going to cut a pair out. Okay. Well, that's cool. Okay. So, all right. Everybody knows that Ed. Uh, I don't like a whole bunch of glass. I'm going to cut this pair right here out for Juan. So the first thing we're going to do. Listen to my cutter. Smooth breeze coming off. Here we go. And we'll get rid of that, that pair. Okay, so I think I'm good. Everybody can see. Thumbs up, everybody. We're good. You can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just take, we're going to put a little mark right here. That's where I'm starting. Now, because... We've drawn our pattern on this. We want to stay right on the inside. Of our black line. So what we've done is we've started right here. I put a mark here. We went around. They can't see. Here. 
And now I'm going to get a little bit closer here. We're going to try and start this with just a small run. It's running. It's running. A little bit at a time. Now remember, we want to stay behind our score. Just behind it. So we got that and ran right to the point where we where we stopped our score and started it again. Okay. So now we're just going to take this. I can't see. A little bit of that and a little bit of that. So we end up with a pair and we're going to just have to we're just going to have to, you know, clean this up a little bit right here. Clean that up. But y'all, there's our pair right there. Now we'll grind it, foil it. One thing you don't want to do, keep in mind, you always keep your work area cleaned off because you don't, you don't want to put your hands down inside of all this stuff. Barbara's got some, oh, got I got some paper towels right here. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to wipe this off and we'll just put it there we go. We're just going to wipe this right off. It has a little trash can right under his foot here, and we'll just take that. We don't want to get it in our in our deal. And we'll just put it here. Right there. Keep bar. All right. Okay. I saw one little thing on there. All right. You're good. We're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's the worst thing to pick one of those things up and not to realize well, and you, you got never, it on your you hand never clean, and you, you get to wipe your face. Never your clean eye. your table like that. Never, never, mm, ever never. clean your table like that. You don't want to do that because it just doesn't make any sense to do it. So I hope, Juan Carlos, I hope that that helps you. Uh, cutting a pattern is really not much different than cutting a straight line other than you're constantly moving. And y'all saw me do something that I really rarely do, which is cut glass sitting down. I would prefer to cut glass standing up. And if I do that, usually things come out correctly the way they're supposed to. Okay. Uh, see, Sim, uh, I think those might be made by Inland, but I haven't been able to find them either. The, these little running pliers, and I'm still looking for them. I don't know where I bought them. I've had them forever. So, um, and I'm waiting to hear back from two suppliers on them to see I if they have. I think they them. were made by Inland. Is Inland? Yeah, they're still Inland. Still good. It's glass star. That's okay. We on fire. have the viewer showcase. What? Yes, we have the viewer showcase. Barb, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, we're not ready for dinner yet, John. But here we go. We're going to share the viewer showcase. Um, and tonight, the first thing up is Patty. Patty's. Um, oh, the Santa Claus. Patty Hike. Yeah. Uh, this pattern is by Justin Benke. And he, ha you can buy his patterns on Etsy. Um, I don't know what the name of his store is, but just Google them. And yeah, so Patty, Patty did this. a beautiful job on this window. Congratulations, Patty. Yes, that's very nice. Um, and course, a lot of work goes into that, and the colors are beautiful. Santa makes everybody smile. We know that. So the next slide is Halloween. So this is by Texas Tom. Tom uh, is on on here as uh, Tom, Tom Sharp. Sharp, and um, this is adorable. I love the little. Um, I love the rat climbing up her hat. I love the little hat. rat climbing up his hat. <laughs> so um, we're just showing one photo from each viewer tonight since we had so many. But uh, Thomas, uh, I want to talk to you about the other two photos you sent in. Uh, we'll talk this week. And okay, next up. I love that. And I'm not really into scary things, but that little rat, it's just, is the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really like that. Okay. So. This is by Ray. And you saw uh, in the previous live streams, Ray had sent in his work and it was uh, in a series of as he was working on it. And this is the completed uh, project, which yes. is really cool. So this is a clock for the it's restaurant. Very luminescent. Apparently Ray, Ray and his wife, they frequent the restaurant. Maybe, I don't know, but nice. You know, it. Ray did a, a exceptional job on this. And you know what? All of the work that y'all send us is exceptional. And the next work coming up is Stained Glass by Karen Mills. And I believe this is Karen's first um, big piece. This is for her daughter, Randy Lee. And it's that's the picture of Randy Lee right there. And her cute little rescue dog, her first rescue dog, Nova. Awesome. Way to go. Awesome. Y'all. Hats off to the four of you because you deserve it. Your work is wonderful. Thank you guys for submitting that. And if any of our viewers would like their work to be considered for the RDRV live stream, just send us a message by going to conwayglass.com forward slash RDRV and you'll see a pop up that says send us a message or a question. Just send us a question and we'll send you the link. And you know, I was gonna that say. was pretty cool. <laughs> that was cool, you guys. And what are we going to eat for dinner? I have no I'm idea. I'm not sure. So, uh, who's looking for the run and pliers bar? Uh, CS Sin. Okay, all right, okay. I have some time in the morning, I'm gonna find them for you. <laughs> I have about two hours. He, he's got. Oh, yeah, he does. Have, I'm going to the dentist in the morning. He's going to be, uh, I, I'm might, chauffeur. I might need to drive home. I hope not. But um, anyway. Anyway, yeah. it's all uh, good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. We've been, you know, we had to, uh, with the COVID was really high and then we got my hip replaced. So those are all things that kept us out of the doctor's offices. And now, uh, you know, Barbara's ready to get this part of her dental work done and, so that's what we're ha what's happening. Okay. Do y'all have any more questions, comments, complaints, suggestions? Magali, you kill me too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kill me. I tell you that you know the the something that's that my boss told me. Um, oh, probably thirty five years ago, forty years ago, probably. Well, 40, 40 years ago, because I've been working for myself for 36. But is that you never um, you never start to cut a piece of glass and then stop and pick your cutter up and try and go back to the same spot because you're always going to get a skip there. So even if you have to even if you have to take a break, you keep your cutter on the glass on the score where it is. Take a break, turn around shift yourself, whatever you need to do, but don't pick the cutter up. Okay. And if you don't pick the cutter up, you probably won't have a skip, even if you're making curves, you know, like we're making, like we're trying to make right here on, uh, on this pair. But Juan Carlos, check out the video and uh, there's how to cut the pair for that lamp repair for you. I don't know what you Oh, okay. I don't know what you mean, John, by change hair color. It, I'm not sure what that means, but. Um, you want to change uh, the hair color on the. On which. On which the doctor one? there. On the. On the which. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, good tip. Good tip. Okay. Yeah, I really like the, the, the witch, the Santa, the clock. I like the, all four of those viewer showcase profiles this week, Barbara. I did too. They really and make I... me smile. Karen, you've come a long way, girl. You've come a long way. Okay, guys. Getting signed on to your group. Oh, good. That's great. Please do. Thank you. Okay, so... I need some more questions or we're going to have to go. I'm going to have to take Barbara out to dinner tonight if we don't get some questions. You guys are the best. Okay. What do, what, I do have another question. Go ahead, Barb. Let what me have temperature it. do you keep your soldering iron set to? That was... 
All right. Um, that was from Julie. So everybody. No, that wasn't from Julie. I'm sorry. So everybody. I know that. I don't know who. I, I harp a lot on using um, iron controls. You only need one. You only need one. If your iron has a controller in the handle. That means you have that one. That means you have one. Don't try and stick it with another one because, you know, then you're sticking yourself. Yeah. For some reason, uh, people get, one person got confused about that, but I just want to make it clear. Yeah. One iron control is plenty. Is if, it, plenty. if you have one in your iron, consider that an iron controller. Okay. Please. So the iron control that I use is freestanding. It's got a six foot cord on one end of it. And then I can plug my six foot cord from my soldering iron into that. And I can control the temperature that way. So this is what I do with my soldering iron control. It, it has numbers on it, one through 10, okay? I start out on number seven and let everything sit for 20 minutes. That acclimates itself to three things. The air temperature, whether I got the ceiling fan going on and whether the air conditioner is blowing or not, okay? So I leave it on seven and then I do my test. If I'm doing copper foil, I do my test to melt my 60-40 solder and make it flow. Seven is not the magic number. Seven and a half, maybe eight. If you're using 60-40, eight and a quarter. I don't, I don't have a magic number because it's all dialed in to the humidity, to the air temperature, and to the air that's moving around you. Please, though, start out on seven. Do your test. Make sure you're not melting your lead, but you're melting solder because there's only one way to do one, two, three, straight up, and that's to have your iron the right temperature to melt the, lead, the solder but not melt the lead on the count of three. Give it a shot, y'all. I use only one iron controller, and mine is not in my iron. Thank you. Well, you're, it's not in my iron. That's it's all. It's not in your iron. Yeah, that's I right. just use one. But they do make them with it in the iron. They so do. You just need that. And they make it, the irons are really good. The, the The thing that I found about using an iron with a controller in the handle is it's twice as heavy as the iron should well, be. Well, it's, it's gonna, heavy. Yeah. And the cord doesn't go as far. It's cumbersome. We work on big windows. We're, we're not working on small. So, you know, that it works best for us. Plus, we use different size irons. And so we need to, we need yeah. that control. So that's I, mean, I have, a, I have an one, iron that you, has a one inch tip on it. Yo. You can't use a great big iron with a restat hook to it and work all day. Right. You, you're right. fighting against yourself. Okay. So we have a couple more questions great. came in. Uh, is it okay to use oxidized solder? Um, Al got some secondhand solder or AI got some second hand solder is the the solder oxidizing is fine okay you can actually you can take it and clean it off with steel wool before you use it it's not going to leave a bunch of trash if the solder doesn't have trash in it when it was made just because it's oxidized it won't leave trash in your work so make sure that you're using the right solder though either 50 50 or 60 40 don't be using something crazy like 95 5 or something like that so um Julie, you said volume with a question mark. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Did we say something wrong or did it sound wrong or I'm not sure. Um, Is our microphone not up and running? I don't know. It should be. I don't see anything. Um, that, says that says it's, it's not. not. Okay. Uh, Kat St. Jane said that Hollander glass has small glass pliers. Um, Hollander, my gosh, I haven't heard from. Time a, I haven't heard of them in a long time. I'm glad to hear they're still in business. So we'll check that out too. So maybe that's one of the people you should check out tomorrow. C Sim wants to know if we use a light table. Yes, we do. We cut on a light table, and um, you can find those on our videos. Mostly, uh, go to the Oak Tree Stained Glass Project. We have a lot of videos there about we're cutting, cutting on the light where box. We're cutting on the light box itself, yeah. So. Okay, Jack Michael is here and says he has no experience whatsoever. Great. But he has an opportunity to take employment at Mida Tiffany of New York. 
Do you think this may be a good place to learn lamps and windows? Yes. Are you kidding? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. If you have is. an opportunity to have someone teach you how to fabricate reproduction Tiffany lamps, they're going to take the time to teach you. Actually, I can tell you this. You're going to start at the very back end first. You're going to start where the lamps are being finished and work your way to the, where they're being put together. So the good thing about yes. working for someone like that is you're going to learn each. You're probably going to do one thing for a long time. Then you're going to do another. You're probably going to be, you know, finishing and then you might get promoted to foiling and then you might get promoted to glass cutting. Um, um, so, you know, there's all kinds of things that you'll learn so and you'll learn them in depth. Chat's not working. Magali, can you pick us up? Are you are you having any trouble with us, Magali? Can you uh, just let us know, yay or nay, please? It was Julie. Her volume, uh, her. Uh, okay, uh, we got it now. Went out. Okay. Okay, and um, um, the other chat not working is uh, your <laughs> chat won't work if you're not uh, on a, if you're not on line if you're wa watching it on television the chat doesn't work you won't see the chat okay yes yeah, so i just have... found that out yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're still happened. learning just like y'all yeah. yeah so that see that's uh if you're watching i'm not sure who else watching on television but you won't see the chat if you're on tv okay so i think everything went well tonight flowering glass think? good to see it. it's working for them okay Seems okay now. Okay, great. We're glad. Any and more you, questions? Our biggest surprise was last week in the hotel room, y'all. We had we did not think that was going to go off at all. That's right. <laughs> and yeah. and that was a big. Actually, it was uh, it was a big hit. So I'm I'm trying to make sure that I've told you everything that's coming up. Now, don't forget in September our stained glass retail store opens back up on Wednesdays only. So give us a call if you're planning on coming in and we'll make sure we have time to meet with you and uh, answer all your questions while you're here. Uh, also, the eBay store opens in September and November. Our online shopping from Conway Glass, our blown glass, our ornaments, and our uh, we'll gallery be... opens in November as well. Right, right. That's right, Barb. And then, I, and then we have our annual... First Saturday in December pop-up gallery in the parking lot where we have all of our Christmas ornaments and items ready to be purchased and taken away. Okay, Jack, I think that's an exciting opportunity and I would go for it, especially at your young age. You, uh, you can make a career out of this and it's a yeah. wonderful way to apprentice and learn about it. So good if, luck with that. Yeah, Jack, if they're going to, if they're going to take you in and teach you, uh, my only thing to you is uh, you haven't started getting your first paycheck yet. Go ahead and get it, man. Cause that this is an opportunity that you need to open that door for. Sounds good, Jack. Good luck. Good luck. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Let us know how that works out for you. Yeah, please keep checking in with us, Jack. Yeah, check in with us and uh, let us know how that's going. Okay. Any more questions, y'all? Don't forget, if you want to know about our upcoming videos, to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. My lips aren't working. <laughs> and um, ring that bell. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the notification bell, y'all. And hey, don't forget, as of tonight, just a little while ago, we only need 12 subscribers to hit 6,000. And then our next goal is 10,000. And I know everybody's going to help us get to it. So we appreciate it. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. And, uh, you know, everything that we do, we do for you. And we appreciate you guys and we appreciate you sharing everything with us. And I know all the viewers appreciate it as well. Y'all have a good week. Watch for that new video that's coming out. And don't um, forget Friday. Yeah. Everyone and, gets it Friday. Members get it Thursday. We'll see. Yeah, you. And you can join up and don't forget, you can join up to our RDRV fan club page. And that is uh, 
four ninety nine a month. No. Are you finished? No, I'm not finished. <laughs> yeah, I'm finished. Good night, everybody. Good it's night, Ed. Everybody. And this is Barb. And we're the Streeters. Good night, everybody. Good night.